Thank you, Lexi. That was beautiful. I'd like to welcome all of you this morning. Uh, our chaplain today is Steve Newell, and uh, the chaplain's room is right back here. Um, <coughs> and he'll meet with people from 11.30 to 11.50. And uh, today is our salad luncheon, right? Okay. And so there's coffee and shelly, or sherry thought to the fact that we have treats up there. Okay. Uh, let's take a moment for prayer. In this time of prayer, we affirm this truth. I am a spiritual being. We release old thoughts from our mind and the emotions connected to those thoughts. To release the old provides room for the new. What a freedom this brings to us. In this new freedom, we prepare ourselves for new thoughts, new emotions, and new conditions through which we may express more of the Holy Spirit. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, for always being with us, guiding us forward to receive new insights and greater understanding. We gratefully affirm that with you, all things are possible. Thank you for blessing us in whatever we need today. And may our lives be filled with your peace, your power, and your presence as we seek to have a closer relationship with you. Thank you. And so it is. We say the unity worldwide affirmation and the unity of aims affirmation. I invite you to think of them as a prayer and holding them in collective intention. So please join with me in saying Unity's worldwide affirmation. Together, there is one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, good, omnipotent. And now the Unity Church of Ames affirmation. Together. Through the Christ Spirit in us, we create a better church and a better world. So be it. Yes. And Sherry's going to read the daily word for us today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope my gravelly voice doesn't bother you today, but it's as good as it gets. <laughs> yes, I hear that's what counts. And the words for today are let go and let God. I let go and let God be God in my life and in the lives of my loved ones. Watching a child get on the school bus, begin a new career, or start his or her own family is an exercise in letting go for the parent. We are proud of each step of their growth toward independence, yet we may find it a little difficult to give up control. Whether a child, a parent, a spouse, or friend, they each have their own path to follow. And I trust God to guide them along the way that they should go. Holding on to my faith in God, I take a breath and let go of the need to <coughs> be in control. I trust God to show them and me a vision far greater than any I could imagine on my own. Through letting go and letting God, I allow my loved ones to reach their highest potential. The scripture comes from Psalm, chapter 52, verse 8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. Words for today, let go, let God. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is incredibly wonderful to see you all here this morning. Sherry and Larry, woohoo! Yay! Okay. All I can say is that's a testament to the power of prayer, right? And healing. Woohoo! 
We are so blessed. Be still and know. Be still. Wasn't that piece beautiful? Clark wrote that. And the poetry is from Vanti Wamala, a Buddhist monk. He was present at a lyceum when I was in school, and I bought the book, never imagining that we'd set it to music. So I'm going to contact him to see if we can get his permission to acknowledge that and then publish it and put it out in the world. Everybody should hear that. OK, this past weekend, we were supposed to have a retreat. By that title, Be Still and Know. And once again, isn't God, doesn't God have a sense of humor, doesn't she? <laughs> I didn't just write this talk, I, li I lived it once again. All too often, what's with that? All too often, I have to live it. I just needed to be still. In this instance, I really, really needed to be still. I have been going much too fast, and people, well, my husband says that to me, do I listen to him? Well, <coughs> not really. <coughs> On important things. Yeah. <laughs> like, you have witnesses now. <laughs> you have witnesses. It's recorded. <laughs> it's recorded. <laughs> this whole talk is about humility. It really is, because I've been kind of over the top, and I had no idea how tired I was really tired. And it was blissful. Jim came in, we got the PowerPoint done, we got everything done, so I really had Friday off. And I could get rested. I could plant my annuals in the flower pots and the flower beds. I could get out my spring and summer wardrobe finally, right? It's finally going to be warm. And then I could do all the kind of stuff normal people do, right? We went to the symphony last night. It was just gorgeous, just gorgeous. So the bottom line is, Rev Deb, it would be good if you actually practiced <clears throat> what you preach, right? It's kind of like the shoemaker's kids go barefoot, the, you know, the banker or the accountant has overdue bills, the dietician secretly binges on M&Ms, and the minister doesn't make downtime for herself until she goes out of town. I don't think that's sustainable. So last Thursday, I found myself having to write the talk because I usually write it on Tuesday, but I was still caught up in, I gotta get everything done for this retreat we're gonna have and not gonna have. And then it all came to a head on Wednesday morning because I got an email from Liz Mari that she was very ill, had been in the emergency room, didn't think she could get out anything this week. <sighs> okay, there's a message here. Oh my goddess, what am I going to do? And then when I talked to Reverend Elizabeth the day before, she had had all these unforeseen foreseen things happening in her church. We could hardly have a two-minute conversation, and this was supposed to be our last planning meeting on the phone before she got here. It was not looking good. It was just not looking good. Hmm, now what do I do? I canceled church because of snow. I've never canceled a retreat before. This is a new place to be. So I had to practice getting still. What does still mean? What does it mean to really get still? How do I do still, if you do still? And first I had to figure out what it means, and it was going to be in the retreat. And it still is grown. <laughs> That's for Sally. Because I figure by the end of September, early October, whenever we have this retreat, I will have forgotten about this and need a reminder. And so will you. So it'll be in the retreat. So here's what it means. And I have to thank <clears throat> Jerry and Elaine Rogers for this. Because right before Elaine went in to have her surgery, I went to visit them in their apartment. And what they said to me is they were hoping Elaine would be well enough to come to the retreat because they're faithful retreat people. And they asked me, you know, the very first one you had was Bloom Where You're Planted, and you made an acronym for Bloom, and we wrote it down, and we remember it, and we say it every day. And I thought, oh, wow. So could you make an acronym for this that helps us remember the point of all of it? 
And as we sat there together, I thought, well, it's peace, be still and know, still, and it just downloaded, settling till I listen and learn. Settling, sitting, staying, stopping, standing, till I listen and learn. That's what still is, what it means to be still. So let's take them one at a time. S, settle, sit, stand, stop, stay, surrender. If you're going to be still, you have to slow down. Your choice, whichever one you need, but you really have to become still in your mind and your body. And even when your body may still be moving, your mind has to stop, slow down, and let your body catch up with it. It's kind of the first step. It reminds me of the first step in the 12-step recovery program, right? The first step is surrender, and that could work in this too. Surrender till I listen and learn. Till, for the T, period, till. Because this stillness business is on God's time, not yours. Dang. Till I listen and learn. It does not happen on command. It's not like flipping on the light bulb. It doesn't work quite like that. It's a process. And it happens when you begin to breathe and pay attention. You pay attention, you're not going to experience stillness until you stop, breathe, and begin to pay attention. Now your body may make you slow down with sickness or, or um, dropping things, right? I don't know about you, but when I get overwrought like that and too much on my plate, I would say, where is this? Where is this? I need to find this piece of paper. And it's right in front of me. Has anybody done that one? Yeah. Well, good. I'm not alone. Thank you. Thank you for leaving me not alone with that. Because what you need to do is not fight with your agenda, that the retreat has got to happen. Not fight with your body, your to-do list, or deadlines, right? And on and on and on. So, surrender and sit till, it's on God's time, I. Yes, in this case, it really is all about you, right? Because it happens within you in your head and your heart. This stillness happens <clears throat> within you. We're not okay with going, okay, I'll be still when he or she no longer does what they do, blah, 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 fill in the blank. When they stop doing that annoying thing, then I'll be still, then I'll pray. They've got to get it, then I'll be still. It really is all about you. Ah, oh, shucks. You mean I can't blame anyone else? No. Even though your mind wants to go there very quickly, we can't. And the next L, the first L is listen, period. Listen. And this is a listening from within the heart. Right? When you settle, when you bring it within you, connect with spirit, then you're going to listen within the heart. It's a deep inner listening. It's a listening that connects your head to your heart. Right? And it connects your heart to someone else's heart. It is a kind of listening that takes you out of the mental clutter, the shoulda, coulda, woulda stuff. Well, I should have known better than to schedule this retreat right after our weekend and see blah, 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 shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? This kind of a listening is a centering listening. It's a listening that has nothing to say in response or rebuttal or in debate, argument. It is a deep inner listening 
and it's both inner and outer. And then the, the last L, sitting till I listen and learn. The learning in this case is hearing that intuitive voice deep within you, where you begin to know without knowing how you know. Has anybody had that experience? Learning, right, knowing without knowing how you know, you just know. And trusting that, trusting that. It opens your mind to a new way of thinking and it connects it to your heart for a new way of feeling. Because when you know in your heart, then it lets everything else drop away. It is living from the question, what would it be like if? What would it be like if I could live without blaming? What would it be like if I could live without guilt? What would it be like if you fill in the blank? And then being willing to live into that possibility. What would it be like? That's what getting still really means. So a quick review. S is stopping, standing, sitting, surrendering. Till I listen and learn. Okay, to pick up the story. I have to confess two things. First of all, on Sunday, I had this intuition that this retreat wasn't going to happen last Sunday. Last Sunday, I had that intuition. This retreat wasn't going to Do you think I listened to that? <laughs> no. No. I did not. There weren't that many folks signed up, so I started trying to recruit people. Lynn can tell you that. And that's not my nature, but I was, oh, I'm going to make this sucker happen, right? <laughs> right? I had the intuition, and my inner self was like, yes, cancel this sucker. My inner self was saying, you need time off. You need a break. You need a free weekend, right? Did I listen to it? Score one for my intuition, and then take it away because I didn't listen. Oh, well. I am even... My second confession is I didn't listen, right? We had the board meeting after church. And folks were saying, well, are we going to have this? Or what do you think? And I just said, oh, I'm affirming. We're going to have enough people. This is going to happen. And even if we took a financial hit, I was going to do this retreat, right? Because here's how it's calculated, right? We add up the cost of the venue and the plane ticket for Elizabeth to come, and then we just divide it by the number of people we expect, and that's how we arrive at the price, just so we cover our expenses. Usually it takes 14 people who are full paying, and we, had, and we cover some scholarship money as well. We had seven. Do you think I heard the message? No. We were a long way from that, because some of our regulars were ill, couldn't make it. And how would I know that in February when I scheduled this? You don't. You don't. So you have to begin to let it go. Okay, on Tuesday, I'm working on the retreat stuff. And then I get the call from Liz Mari. She's not a call. I got an email Wednesday morning. She's very ill. She won't be able to do the PowerPoint. She was going to send somebody else to church to get her check, and it's like, the, oh. You know the harmonic convergence of the universe where you know this just isn't going to happen. Okay. I continue to work on the plans, though. Did I get it? Not quite yet. And then I had the divine idea. Elizabeth's ticket is on Southwest. You can reschedule that without any penalty. Oh, my mind began to open. And I sat. I said, this is about to be still a no dub. Then it hit me. That's what you need to do. Go sit and just be still and be with what it is you know that's present here. And then that's what I did. I sat. And I got very clear that I needed to pick up the book. 
the book that, that we're using, that I was using for the retreat is Eckhart Tolle's Stillness Speaks. And I needed to let it speak to me. So you know how God is when she's just working you. I opened it randomly. And it was pretty much right in the middle. And here's the first thing I read. Whenever you are able, have a look inside yourself to see whether you are unconsciously creating a conflict between the inner and the outer, between your external circumstances at that moment, where you are, who you are with, or what you are doing, and your thoughts and feelings. Can you feel how painful it is to internally stand in opposition to what is? Well, couldn't be any plainer, could it? When you recognize this, you also realize that you are now free to give up this futile conflict, this inner state of war. Okay. Could I give it up right away? No. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. You know, I have this thing about I can't let you guys down. You know, I've got this yada yada yada. It's just crazy. Busted. This retreat needed to not happen, and I needed to talk it over with somebody. So I called a dear, dear friend. I called Heather. And I said, so what would it be like if this wouldn't happen? And then she started to process it with me, and she said, well, it'd be okay for me. I think it could work out. And she was very, very accepting and supportive of this. And I thought, okay. Then I called the Arboretum. I thought, God, if this is going to come together, it's got to fall apart nicely, right? <laughs> so I called the Arboretum, and I talked to Mark, and he said, yeah, it's fine. We didn't have any deposit. You can reschedule it. I just need to know for sure so I can tell the people not to come. We're going to open the buildings for you. Okay, it's coming together. Then I called Reverend Elizabeth. And she said, I told her about this Mari. Oh, you're an administrator. Of, no, it's all right. You, we can cancel this. We, I've got a speaker that gives me a free weekend as well. And I need to take a breath. Huh. <clears throat> we prayed together. And then that just helped me to let it go without this feeling of being wrong. So I opened the book again. Like, OK, I need to hear something else. And here's what I found on page 43. When you say yes to what is, you become aligned with the power and intelligence of life itself. Only then can you become an agent for positive change in the world. When you say yes to what is, you become aligned with the power and intelligence of life. Okay. At that point, things were coming together. And it began to manifest that this was not going to happen. And so I began contacting the people, sent out emails. I called Jim and said, help, the PowerPoint, help, help. And he said, are you a church? I said, no, but I can go there. And he came, and if you see any mistakes in the PowerPoint, they're because we did it. <laughs> and that's all right. It's all perfectly wonderful. And it was, it was. Because he came, we got it done, got the bulletin done. Um, it was amazing how it all came together. And we do, and then the, the um, daily word today, let go and let God. <laughs> Control? Do you think it's an issue? Nah. But I did reach everyone who signed up, and we will have it. And my proposal, some of you have paid already. What I'd like to do is cash your checks and send the money to Elizabeth, because she's out the money for the plane ticket. And so I think that would be kind of us to send her the money for that. 
and then we will reschedule this. And by September sometime, everybody who has been um, unable to be there will be healthy and able to be there. Now y'all gotta do your part and stay well, okay? So, all right. I took a deep breath. I took a deep breath and said, thank you, Mother Goddess, for helping me to truly practice still. I didn't stop till I really listened and learned and then could move forward. Everything, there, there's a Romans 8, all things are working together for good for those who serve the Lord. All things are working together for good when we become still. So let's take that into stillness right now, into the silence. And we're going to sing into it with I am at peace. And we've sung this before. <laughs>
the silence I listen, in the silence I learn, when I am still, centered in spirit, my head and my heart come together, and I am grounded in that place of knowing. A knowing that I don't need to question when I am still. So let us sing once again. <clears throat> I'm at peace. Yes. Mm-hmm.